Mayong hapon, buntag, gabi, good afternoon, morning, evening sa atong tanan. Gikan din hit sa Davao City, Mindanao. This afternoon, we will be discussing unpacking the Bangsamora vote. And we are very honored to have Datu Michael Mastura to lead us in answering the question, does voter turnout reflect political behavior of the Bangsamoro as citizens? We are also grateful that Salik Ibrahim is here with us to share their experiences in monitoring elections since 2005 in the Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao and what is now the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. They have monitored at least, if I'm not mistaken, at least eight local, regional, and national elections in the arm barm, and I have not counted here the barangay elections. Okay, to start off, let's go to the basics. Mindanao has 27 provinces and 33 cities. The Bangsamoro has five provinces, Maguindanao and Lanao in mainland Mindanao, and the three island provinces of Basilan, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi. The cities of Marawi, Lamitan, and most recently, Cotabato City, and 63 villages in six North Cotabato towns that voted for inclusion in the BARM in 2019. Mindanao's voting population in 2019 was 14.4 million, and out of a nationwide total of 68.1 million, the voting population of the ARM, it was not well, it was still ARM during the voters' registration in 2019, but it was already BARM uh, during the May 2019 elections. It was about 2.2 million. The Commission on Elections has yet to release statistics on the 2022 registered voters, but the May 2020 census of the Philippine Statistics Authority should give us an insight on what the voting population would be for 2022. Out of 109 million population nationwide, Mindanao accounts for a little over 26 million. The Bangsamoro, uh, 4.4 million. Please note that the census was undertaken in May 2020 when Cotabato City and the 63 villages in North Cotabato had voted for inclusion in the BARM in February, January and February 2019, but were formally incorporated into the BARM only in December 2020. They were still recorded in the PSA census under Region 12, kasi nga May 2020 yung census. The combined population of Cotabato City and the 63 villages is 541.42. Malaki yan, that's half a million. Cotabato City with a population of 325,079 and the 63 villages with a population of 215,433. Yung 63 villages po na population, we extracted that from the PSA's population count in the six towns of North Cotabato. The PSA May 2022 census shows Region 12 has 4.9 million population, while the Bangsamoro has 4.4. But if you take away 540,142 from Region 12, that will show you Region 12 has only 4.36 million population, and the Bangsamoro has 4.94 million. Like the rest of the country, Bangsamoro voters will elect their local chief executives representatives of their legisl le legislature and their congressional districts, senators, party list representatives, and the president and vice president on May 9, 2022. What was postponed by a recently signed law is the election of the 80-member Bangsamoro Parliament. This will be done on May 14, 2025 instead. Let us always remember that the Bangsamoro is a product of the comprehensive agreement on the Bangsamoro, the peace agreement signed by the Philippine government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front on March 27, 2014. The region is still in transition 
to the regular government, which will be parliamentary in nature. The transition period would have ended on June 30, 2022, but it has been extended until June 30, 2025. The 2025 election will be the first election in the new autonomous region, and it will be synchronized with the election of local candidates, congressional and senatorial candidates, and party list groups in 2025. Voters will elect 80 members of parliament, half of them party represent representatives, 32 of them single district representatives, and eight sectoral representatives. Among the five priority codes that RA, Republic Act 11054, or the Organic Law for the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, mandated the Bangsamoro Transition Authority to pass is the Bangsamoro Electoral Code. I checked this morning on the status of the code and was told that it is still with the cabinet code for finalization, close code, before submission to the parliament. But the minority bloc in the BTA, composed of seven out of 80 members, has already filed its version Parliamentary Bill 134, it was filed on September 24, 2021. Thus far, two redistricting bills have been filed. Parliamentary Bills 112 and 117 in July this year for the single district representation of 32 members of parliament or 40% of what would be the Bangsamoro Parliament. Since there is no Bangsamoro Electoral Code as yet, we will schedule a separate forum on that. We hope, however, that the takeaways from this forum will help legislators in the Bangsamoro Transition Authority as they deliberate on the Bangsamoro Electoral Code. But why are we even talking about the Bangsamoro during the election when this region has a small voter registration base compared with other regions in Mindanao and elsewhere in the country. Because rightly or wrongly, the region has been accused of being the, quote, cheating capital, close quote, in the country during elections, and small its regional voting capability might be, it is enough to make or unmake a national candidate. Okay, mentioned election, in reference to the Moro region and the word conjures images and yes, sounds of gunfire, bomb explosions, and this. Naalala nyo ba ito? Let me tell you about the birds and the bees Okay, I remember Benjamin Abalos, the politician turned chairman of the Commission on Elections. Sorry. Um, I remember Benjamin Abalos, the politician turned chairman of the Commission on Elections, said on July 18, 2005, while preparing for a covenant signing of candidates for the August 8, 2005 armed elections, that people blame COMELEC. But history, he said, has shown that voting in Mindanao has been problematic. He was actually referring to the arm then. Commissioner Rex Bora was more specific. In that same venue, this was at the Marco Polo Hotel in Davao City, he challenged politicians and candidates to stop using their era or internal revenue allotment to corrupt Comelec officials. Sabi niya, stop tempting and corrupting Comelec officials in the field and the vicious cycle of poverty in the arm will remain, he said, when politicians use the era not for development but to corrupt Comelec officials. The region has been dubbed as vote bank 
or reservoir of votes for national for candidates of national posts who want to win due to its command votes, controlled votes, captive votes. Datu Mike Mastura will tell us more about this later. Okay, now question. In some areas, there are there. Uh, well, uh, the arm has recorded uh, statistical improbabilities, and there were several instances in the past when there was a high voter turnout. Sometimes the turnout was more than the registered number of voters. Can your opponent really get zero vote in the borough areas? How could Fernando Po Jr., a favorite movie actor among the Moro, get zero in some parts in 2004? Sabi ni Abalos, two ways now to give your opponent zero. One is through force, the other is through love. He said, through love, his loyal supporters now could give his opponent zero, and that is in Metro Manila. Pero force kaya nga or love ang nangyari in 2004? Uh, if we remember, hello, Garcia, this was the presidential election of 2004, although this was exposed in 2005. Uh, a voice that sounded like the incumbent president who was seeking re-election asked so many questions. So will I still lead by one million? Hello, dun ba sa Lanao del Sur, tsaka sa Basilan, di raw nagmamatch ang SOV uh, sa COC. Yung kabila, may teacher raw, silang hawak. Oo, sabi ni Teng, dapat sigurado natin consistent yung mga documents sa Maguindanao. Elections in the Moro region are also characterized by a heavy military presence and heavy military and police presence. Hotspots were also common in these areas before, although Professor Abinales in the forum two weeks ago cited a study where the incidence of violence has dropped with the rise Naman in the number of unopposed candidates. Running unopposed is actually the strategy, was actually the strategy employed by the late Andal Ampatuan Senior. Uh, this was to deal with your political opponents by negotiating with them so they will not file their certificates of candidacy. Uh, marami ng gumayan nito ngayon so that yung former hotspots daw ay nagiging peaceful na because unopposed na yung candidates. Oops. I missed that. Uh, that photo, I, that was a photo of Andal Ampatuan Senior and Andal, sorry, and Sajid Ampatuan who in 2007 were running for governor and vice governor of the ARMM, uh, sorry, of Maguindanao. And um, Andal Ampatuan Senior was uh, what that, that billboard actually said, Andal Ampatuan Senior was an opposed candidate. What they actually meant was unopposed, U-N-O-P-P-O-S-E-D, but hindi na edit ang lumabas, an, A-N, tapos opposed, O-P-P-O-S-E-D, candidate. Uh, hindi ko lang alam paano ibalik, so sayang hindi nakita yung picture. Okay. Running as a... In the 2007 midterm elections nga that I was referring to, uh, where the uh, Amdal Ampatuan Senior ran for governor unopposed, you could not find a single campaign poster of the other presidential and senatorial candidates in the towns and highways controlled by the Ampatuans. But campaign materials such as 
those billboards na lampas sa prescribed ng Comelec ang dami-dami. Andal Ampatuan Jr., the mayor of Datu Unsay Ampatuan, and the son of Andal Sr. was running for governor or at least wanted to run for governor of Maguindanao in the 2020-2010 election. Like his father, he wanted to run unopposed. But former ally Toto Mangudadatu was bent on challenging the Ampatuans. We all know what happened on November 23, 2009. To the convoy led by Mangudadatu's wife, Jenaline, on their way to file Mangudadatu's certificate of candidacy for governor. 53 members of the convoy and five others who were not part of the convoy but happened to pass the highway at the wrong time were herded to Sitio Masalay where they were killed, a number of them, including their vehicles, hurriedly buried in mass graves, buried supposedly to hide the evidence of the mass murder. The perpetrators, however, were not able to bury everyone or every vehicle. 58 persons were killed that day, 32 of them from the media. We only have 146 days to the May 9 elections. How many registered voters do we have, do we really have? Given the quarantine classifications, I wonder if Salix Seacare was able to monitor the registration of voters, a crucial factor in the elections, as the region also has a history of registration of underage voters, too young to vote, but who were claiming to be 18 and above, or voters from within or outside the city, town, or province tracked in to register. In some instances in the past, non-Moro residents in neighboring areas were found to have registered in a city within the Moro region. All these forms of cheating happened only in the Bangsamoro. Dun lang ba ito talaga nangyari? Are these forms of cheating happening only in the Bangsamoro? Did Dagdag Bawas really originate in the Moro region? Or was this the handiwork of what Datu Mike Mastura refers to as treasure hunters from elsewhere? I end with these slides on the leaders elected in what is now the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region from 1987 to 2022. Ito yung Basilan uh, from 2019 to 2022. It's Hataman as governor, Hataman as representative, and Hataman as mayor, although Isabella is not part of the BARM. And Furigais have been the mayor, the Furigai couple. Um, Papalit-palit lang po sila sa, as mayor of Lamitan City. In Lano del Sur, iba-ibang apelido naman, pero magkasunod parate. Uh, the Adjongs, <clears throat> uh, Gandamra is still the mayor of Marawi and is seeking a third term. So with the Adjongs, this is Maguindanao. And this is Sulu, uh, where the Tans lord it over, and Loong, and although the Loong, Tupai Loong, Loong uh, died in 2016, uh, and there are Bisons in the second district. Tawi Tawi from 1987 to 2022, Matba Sahali, Matba Sahali, Matba Sali, Jafar, Jafar Sahali. And Cotabato City, uh, the mayor now is Mayor Cynthia Gianni. 
uh, she is seeking a third term. She assumed the post of mayor in 2016 when her brother uh, passed away uh, that year. She was elected vice mayor actually in 2016. Okay. Now, thank you very much.